want to get to the security funding battle right here. Our next guest saying it is important to stand with Israel and Ukraine, but like many other Republicans, she is pushing for an aid package that includes an overhaul of U.S. border policies. Joining us right now, West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito is here. She's vice chair of the Senate Republican Conference. Good morning to you. Um, Good morning. Where, where do things stand right now? And do you have any hope that things are going to shift given what seems like a standstill? Well, I always have hope, and I do have hope in this case. And uh, right now, our main negotiator uh, for the Republicans is Senator Lankford, and uh, Senator Murphy from Connecticut is working on the Democrats' uh, plan. And I know they're in active conversations. Uh, I think they do have some areas of agreement on the, on the border policy issues, uh, but there's still a lot of sticking points. Uh, our, our position, our Republican position, is we need to bring these numbers down, have more accountability, figure out who's coming in. It seems as though the other position is to just cycle people in quicker, put more money at it. But uh, I think the president put this in his initial package in terms of where we need in t as we're looking at Ukraine, Israel, and, uh, and Taiwan. And this is an actual uh, part of that essential uh, security package. Right. As you know, uh, Democrats have pushed back on this idea in large part because what's been proposed uh, appears to prevent, in certain cases, uh, folks who are seeking legitimate asylum uh, from crossing and crossing the border and immigrating. How how is that all going to square know, I, itself? You know, I, I heard uh, Senator Murphy on Sunday say that uh, the Republicans essentially want to close the border. That is absolutely a, a wrong characterization of our position. We want legitimate uh, asylum claims to be uh, adjudicated at, w at the beginning rather than eight to ten years later. Uh, I think that uh, we can have a system and policy changes that will make it so that people who are at the border as they're coming in, you can tell they are fraudulent charges and go ahead and send them back rather than into the country to await a uh, further uh, judicial hearing. And, and so so I think we want to have accountability for who's coming. I think we've seen that uh, there are over hundreds that are coming in from the terror watch list. Uh, there's, the numbers are just astounding. I, every right. week there's a new record set. And so, so I, shutting down the border is not the objective. Right. It's the accountability piece Sen and pulling the numbers down. Senator, help yeah. educate our audience because, you know, and you probably can't see it, but we have a, a banner up that says international aid versus border funding. And everybody looks at it and says just border funding is the issue. But walk through the actual fault lines of what the issue is with the border funding between the Democrats and Republicans, because it's not just border funding overall. It's not that that the, the Democrats don't want to have any anything happening at the border and Republicans only want to. There, there's something else going on here. Well, it, it, it's a difference, I think, Andrew, the way to explain it is the difference is money or policy. You see repeatedly Secretary Mayorkas coming before the Congress and saying, fix the border policy. In other words, for them to be able to enforce, although I don't think they enforce strongly as they, as they need to, to be able to enforce to bring those numbers down, to have deterrence. And so as you look at it, when you see the, the border funding, you're talking about funding more people uh, that will uh, take your paperwork and get you into this country quicker. That's the funding piece. Or uh, what we would like to see funding is more internal enforcement, more um, turning back to your original country, more uh, uh, deterrence so that people won't see that it's an open door when you come in and you can stay eight to ten years without any kind of interference. So it's a policy change rather than just throwing more money at a problem that's growing every single right. day. And then let me ask you about the pay fours, if you will, for sure. this. As you know, uh, on uh, the Congress side of this situation, on the House side, uh, there is an effort afoot to tie IRS funding or effectively defunding uh, to this bill. It may look like it is uh, a pay for in a very short term way, but obviously you can look at all the other scoring and uh, it appears that when you defund the, IR the IRS, in some cases if you fund the IRS, you over, over, over time actually collect more money. You know, I think the, the pay for issue, while it needs to be a part of the conversation, I think the security issue sort of overwhelms that. We see Ukraine at a very pivotal point. I support Ukrainian funding. Israel, obviously, 
as it a uh, fighting something that we never could have imagined. And we see China encroaching every day into Taiwan. And we also see this just unmitigated flow into our southern border. So I think it, in the end, the pay for issues will probably fade away. Uh, I think that the speaker made a good statement to say that there's a new there's a new guy in town here over on the House and we're going to start paying for things. And I think that's where the initial uh, impetus was to 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 uh, pull down the IRS funding. I'm all for that. I mean, the, the right. funding going into the IRS is ridiculous. We can do that with technology.